Welcome, everybody, to the NFL Draft Geek Film Room. I'm Brian Johannes, and on this episode, we're taking a look at Oregon quarterback Justin Herbert and what he has, the traits that he has that makes him one of the elite quarterback prospects in this 2020 NFL Draft. Uh, if you're not familiar with what I like to do in these, I like to go ahead and look at different clips from different games just to kind of illustrate the points. I try to focus in on the positives on what they can do and what what how what type of player they are. And Justin Herbert's a guy that I've been watching for the last several years. Usually, I try not to you know because he's been the guy that's could have uh, declared. Um, I've watched tape on him for the last you know three seasons, and I really kind of went all in on him last year during the Stanford game. And in that game, he just put on a clinic. You know, he showed good anticipation skills. He showed good ball placement. I mean, he was putting balls uh, in positions for his receivers to make the best catches, whether it's, you know, putting it low and outside so his receiver doesn't get hit, leading receivers, uh, reading defenses. <clears throat> in that Stanford game, I saw an elite quarterback, and I didn't quite see it at any other points. You know, the Cal game after that, a few others, he didn't have the best games. So when he decided to come back for a senior year, he wanted to come back and he wanted to lead his team to a national championship, win the conference, so on and so forth. Stanford didn't go to the college football playoff, but they did win the Pac-12. They did go to the Rose Bowl and win it. So he accomplished a lot. And so what I wanted to see out of Josh Justin Herbert this year is I wanted to see could he be more consistent? Because if you just take that Stanford game from last year, he's an elite number one overall pick caliber of quarterback. I wanted to see if he could replicate that and play close to that game. And throughout this season, throughout these games, I'm going to show you, I'm going to show you what he can do and the type of player that he is. All right, let's go ahead and get into the actual game clips and and when we think of Justin Herbert everyone knows hey he's big he can move and he's got a big time arm and that's no different here in this play we're gonna see against Auburn he's gonna get pressure from the outside he's getting pressure from here he's getting pressure from there there's plenty of room his his interior guys are actually in a position to allow him to step up so as we see here he's able to climb up in the pocket and deliver a strike and if you look at that pass once again a climb in the pocket he puts it on a laser so that his receiver can go ahead and make that catch that's a tight spot of a throw and he's able to just drive it in there get it to his receiver herbert's also able to utilize it's not just like he's this big tall guy that could throw it down the field He's able to utilize his mobility. We saw it climb in the pocket while, and, and get out to the outside. So on this play right here, he's going to end up rolling out to his right, and he's able to make an accurate throw on the move with velocity, hitting his receiver down the field. So while he's moving, he doesn't necessarily have to have those feet completely set under him to still make short or intermediate throws with good velocity. That ball got to that, that wide receiver in a hurry. Not only does Justin Herbert have the ability to throw with, with strength and he can put the ball on a line and, and show good velocity, he's also able to be accurate. And this play right here is as a prime example that he's got two guys coming. He's, they're showing double A gap blitz right here. And he's going to end up hitting this receiver right here over the middle. But he's able to do this, knowing the blitz is coming. He sees this guy end up coming. He sees that his receiver is going to come open. He stays in the pocket. He doesn't backpedal. He doesn't flee. He stays in the pocket and delivers a uh, ball on a line to his receiver. Maybe held, left him out to dry just a little bit. But he's able to just, he's basically getting hit as he's making that throw. And he's still able to throw with accuracy down the field. We see that toughness once again on this throw. Another play where he's going to get guys blitzing in there. He's going to his right, gets kind of hit, and still is able to make that accurate throw. The ball kind of fl floats. It's not on a complete line to the outside. But he's still getting hit, knows he's going to get hit. So that shows his toughness. Not only can he, he move, not only can he make accurate throws, he can also take hits and be a tough 
uh, quarterback. Now, it's one thing to see a receiver open, hit him for a pass. To be a good NFL quarterback, you've got to be able to show anticipation. You've got to be able to, because the windows are a lot smaller. You're not able to just rifle the ball into spots. You have to be able to see guys getting open, and we see that here. Herbert's going to run a an RPO look, and this receiver is going to be kind of curling in here. And if we watch this play, hey, after this, the ball's not out. This receiver is yet to make his break, but as he comes, Herbert's already starting to make his, his motion to make his pass. The ball's starting to kind of come out there, and this receiver, as you can see, is just making his cut. This is second and 10. He's able to hit this guy forward for a completion. So he looks here. Ball's out right now, right before he makes that cut. Easy pitch and catch. We see a variation of that on this play as well. Uh, third and three, he's going to end up throwing to this receiver right here. He sees that this defensive back is playing off, and he very easily could make this throw right there and have this guy open. But once again, it's third down. He wants to get the first down. Hesitates for just a second, lets his guy get past the, the, the yard to gain, gets the first down. Once again, okay, he's already made his cut, but as you can see, he's looking, sees that he's got a chance to get past the line, the first down marker, and makes that cat, pitch and catch. Another thing that stood out on tape here is Justin Herbert's ability to go through his progressions. He's not a one read and throw type of quarterback. He's a guy that can read the defense, go from one uh, wide receiver to the next before he makes his plays. And on this play, he's going to hit this outside receiver on kind of like a comeback type route. And as when he does this, watch where he's looking. He looks first kind of at the middle. He's looking in this area. Then he turns to here, and you're seeing, if you look at this carefully, he's looking at this receiver. They're looking to see if he's going to go out. Because right here, it could look like, hey, maybe he's dropping into the flat. But Herbert's watching him, and as soon as this cornerback starts to make his break inside, you see his feet start to go, and he was already starting to make his throw there. The ball comes to the outside, third down and seven once again, and he makes that completion for the first down. Ball comes out right when that DB makes his move to the inside, able to get the first down and move the chains. This play right here has got to be one of my favorite throws by Justin Herbert. And it's his ability to, once again, manipulate the defense. So he's going to do a couple different things. At the Right at the snap, he's going to fake to this. Whether this was his first read or not, I don't think so. They throw a lot of these quick wide receivers. You see this guy coming. He pump fakes to that. Then you'll notice he turns his eyes to the middle of the field. Looks off the safety and then is able to throw back over here. So he goes through his progressions. One two, maybe three, you know, maybe it's this guy looking to see if he's got over there, but he ends up making, you know, right here is another one, he ends up making this throw down here for this receiver, puts it on the line, and not only puts it on a line, but puts it where only that receiver can go and make the catch. Yes, it's not in stride, but you're seeing it's over this defender before that guy, turning him to the outside so he can brace for that hit. That's that ball placement that I was telling you about at the beginning. All right, and this last clip, I think, kind of sums up a lot of Justin Herbert and on this play. On this play, he's going to hit this receiver right here for a long touchdown. Spoiler alert. And on this play, he's going to run a, a basically like an out and up. Justin Herbert's going to do a lot here. Just like on that last play, he's going to pump fake right there. It's not a big, huge, you know, bring it down to the tuck position, but he does that little shoulder fade. Then he turns his head down field, and what he's doing is he's looking off the safety because he's going to come back and hit this guy who had the receiver who had worked his way open with a good with a good route, but that pump fake also worked. So if we're going to see a, a replay of it from the other angle, so the receiver does a good job right there. I'll go back just a second. He does a good job of faking in and then out getting that guy to bite with the pump fake but herbert also look there's that little shoulder by looking off the safety there 
he gave his guy room over the top so that safety wasn't in a position really to come over. And he did this all within one play. His ability to go in, his ability to go in, no, hey, quick shoulder fade, look off the safety and hit him, put Oregon up 17 to nothing in this play as they cruise to a Pac-12 championship game. All right, there's a lot to like about Justin Herbert as a prospect. Um, I've said maybe at nauseum, um, you know, he's got good size, six foot six, two hundred forty pounds. He's got good athletic ability. He's going to test well at the combine. You know, he's probably going to be like a four six forty, which you know we think, oh, that's not very fast. It actually is still pretty fast, especially at that size. Um, he's got the arm strength to make all the deep throws. Um, he shows that accuracy in that he improved his accuracy quite a bit. He, uh, his junior year was 59.4% and this year went up to 66.8. And that's a little misleading because Oregon's offense did feature him throwing a lot of horizontal quick throws. And I think a lot of people are negative of them. Oh, by the way, he had a 32 to six touchdown to interception ratio. He's never been a big interception guy. Um, you know, he's got 23 in his four-year career, and that's, you know, that's playing, you know, being a starter for basically three and a half years. So, I think there's this misconception out there of who Justin Herbert is as a prospect, just because Oregon really revamped their offense and changed the way that they did things this upcoming year. They had a one, easily the best offensive line in the nation. Penny Sewell is going to be, is their left tackle. He's going to be a top five pick next year. Uh, Shane Lemieux is going to be a day two pick this year, their left guard. Jake Hansen is going to be a guy that's drafted. Their a right guard doubt, uh, is going to be drafted. Their right tackle is going to be drafted. All five of their guys, Sewell's, their left tackle is going to be easily gone high, but they had a good offensive line is what I'm saying. They've got a good running back in C.J. Verdell. I mean, uh, easily a guy that's going to be in contention for the number one running back in next year's class. Justin Herbert didn't have to do a lot. And if you, you, we saw this with the San Francisco 49ers in, against the Packers. They threw the ball eight times, and they didn't need to throw the ball, and they, and they ran over everyone. And that's what Oregon was able to do this year. So Herbert didn't have to go out there and throw the ball 50 times a game to win them games. He was able to be kind of a game manager, but yet we saw, as we did in these clips, he still took shots downfield. He still showed the ability to make high-level throws. There's games this season where he had to lead his team from behind to get in a position to win. So he's shown that ability to do so. And I think there's that lazy narrative out there that because he threw so many short passes, because he didn't beat Auburn, that he's not this good of a quarterback. I think if you put Justin Herbert and you flipped him and Joe Burrow around, is he he's going to have the same type of success that Joe Burrow had. And that's not taking anything away against uh, from Burrow because I have Burrow as a higher rated prospect in this draft class. But I think Herbert, if you ask him to do the things that some of those other quarterbacks are doing and give him those weapons, I mean, Justin Herbert didn't have Jamar Chase, Terrence Marshall, and Justin Jefferson as his receivers. He His last best receiver as his junior, Dylan Mitchell, was a seventh round draft pick. His best receiver this year is not going is, is not even con- – you know, they're younger guys, but so he's had to kind of elevate people around him at the receiver position. So I'm anxious to see. He went to the Senior Bowl and dominated. He was voted practice player of the week. He he shined in the game. He did everything that they wanted to, and I think he's going to be a locked top 10 pick. I think he's probably going to be a top five pick because, you know, Burrow's probably going to go number one. Someone's going to trade up for him and Tua into the top five, whether that's the Los Angeles Chargers could be the Carolina Panthers. It could be maybe the Dolphins get him. And I think he's going to have success. And he's a player that I think the easy comparison would be Josh Allen. But the comp that I have for him is Carson Wentz. Big and move, strong arm. You ask him to do what you want and he can do it. Carson Wentz went to the Senior Bowl and showed he was an elite prospect. Justin Herbert did the same thing. So I think given the situation that he's in, He's a top five pick, and I think if the team builds around him the right way, gives him some weapons, he can have a good career in the NFL. Thanks for listening. I hope you guys enjoyed. If you haven't checked out my previous Justin Herbert, I I broke down just the Auburn game from earlier in this year. Check out my other 
scouting report videos. Thanks for watching. Follow me on Twitter. Subscribe on the channel. Until next time.